Hey guys, I'm the Great Jedi and welcome back to the channel. Now, we just recently got a brand new Star Wars Jedi Survivor trailer revealing some official gameplay as well as some new confirmed news regarding this game. So, in this video, I'm going to be going over everything we know about Star Wars Jedi Survivor. All the way from additions they offer, platforms, gameplay, the release date, and other bits and pieces of news. So, with all that said, let's get right into it. So starting off with the different editions that they offer, you can choose between three different editions. There's the Standard Edition, the Deluxe Edition, and the Collector's Edition, all of which you can pre-order. Now some of you may ask, what's the benefit of pre-ordering? Well, that's a great question. If you pre-order the game, you will get an Obi-Wan Kenobi inspired Jedi Survival Cosmetic Pack, which includes these three skins. So you get one for Cal his blaster, and his saber, which appears to be Kenobi's saber from Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Now, for the Standard Edition, it's $70, and you get the base game, while the Deluxe Edition is a whopping $90, and you get the base game, as well as the New Hero Cosmetic Pack and the Galactic Hero Cosmetic Pack. The New Hero Cosmetic Pack seems to be Han Solo-inspired with these three skins, where there's one for Cal, BD-1 and his blaster, and it's the same thing for the Galactic Hero cosmetic pack in terms of there being three skins, but this one seems to be inspired from Luke and the BD-1 skin from R2. Now, for the Collector's Edition, it's a big whopping total of $300, um, in which that includes a copy of the game, a steel book case for the game, a certificate of authenticity, a full-size functional Cal Kestis replica lightsaber hilt. Um, the blade is sold separately, so that's not included, as well as it containing a magnetic box that holds the lightsaber hilt. And there is a limited run on the collector's edition, so if you guys for sure are wanting one, be sure to get it now. The link to pre-order that is in the description, as well as all the other links to pre-order the other editions, as well as the official sources that I'm using to provide this information, as always. So now that you guys know what each edition includes, I'm going to give a bit of my two cents. I personally believe that both the collector's edition and the deluxe edition is not worth the money. Uh, I already think that the standard edition is expensive at $70, and I'll be getting that, um, you know, for you guys. That way you guys can watch it the day it comes out. But for those that do want the deluxe edition, just realize that you're paying $20 for two skins for Cal, two skins for BD-1, and two weapon skins which is just ridiculous in my opinion, especially when comparing it to their first game, Fallen Order, uh, the Deluxe Edition, which included more content, and that was only $10 more than the base game. Plus, in the first game, Fallen Order, they actually had a lot of skins anyways, <laughs> so I don't see why that would be not the case for this game. Um, as for the platforms that you can get this game, you can get it on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC, meaning that they're only coming to the newer consoles and not the older generation like the PS4, sadly. So I just thought that was worth mentioning because I know a lot of you guys who still haven't been able to get your hands on a PS5 yet or the new Xbox, so just kind of keep those expectations in check. And as for the release date for the game, it is confirmed to release on March 17th, which is awesome because we're only about three months away from that. And it's right after the Bad Batch Season 2 and during the Mandalorian Season 3. And that release date was actually shown in the most recent gameplay trailer at the Game Awards, which I actually want to talk about for a second, because there are some things that we can gather from it. Now, I'm not going to be doing a huge in-depth breakdown right now, but I do want to talk about some cool things that we do know about the game now. So for starters, I thought that the trailer was really good, but definitely wanted to see more, which is a good thing. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get more of that fairly soon, just because the game comes out in March and they gotta start their marketing towards it, you know? Which is what they did for Fallen Order. In fact, with Fallen Order, they ended up doing an entire panel where they showed a gameplay demo reveal, which I feel like may be a similar case for this game, just because the game is pretty much finished and playable since Cameron, the guy who plays Cal Kestis in the game, already played the game and 
Check out what he said. I think I can speak for everybody at Respawn, EA, and Lucasfilm when I say how incredibly excited we are to show our work on Jedi Survivor. I had the chance to play the game recently, and I can honestly say that this is one of the best Star Wars games of all time. And that's saying something. Yeah, I have no doubt that you'll feel the same way when you play it too. So now that you guys know what he just said, that is a very bold claim, and I don't think I have to tell you guys that. Um, I mean, that that's his opinion, but I, I just gotta say, we'll see when we play it. Obviously, from him saying that, though, we do know that the game is, like I said, it's pretty much done and playable. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did something similar to, like, the Fallen Order gameplay demo reveal. And I'm not gonna just sit here and say that the game is 100% finished and ready to go. Um, but it should be pretty close. And even the gameplay demo for Fallen Order wasn't in its 100% finished and launched state. So I think it is pretty likely. At least in some way, shape, or form. But from what we have seen of the gameplay in the trailer, we can already see a big improvement. For example, some new things that we can see is that we can use the force to control your enemies, to fight your enemies, you can ride on mounts while still being able to fight, and even have different lightsaber fighting styles such as cross guard and dual wielding, which is really cool because in the first game they just made that an ability. Which I guess that can be the same case here, but I doubt it just because on their site for advertising the game it says that it will have lightsaber fighting styles and more force abilities. Plus, there was also a few more instances in the gameplay trailer where it shows him dual wielding. It also appears that there's going to be more enemies, planets, ability combos, blaster gameplay, and tons of other new features while keeping the core gameplay of the first game since it's the same series. And that's great. You know, that's what we want in a sequel. We want it to have what the previous game had and more. And so far from what they've shown, it seems to me that's the case, which is awesome. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy it and want to stay up to date for all future Star Wars news and content, including Star Wars Jedi Survivor, because I will be continuing to cover that game and will even be streaming it at release. So please consider subscribing and liking the video only if you enjoyed, of course. It's completely free. And if you didn't end up liking it, that's cool too. Feel free to give the video a dislike and leave any constructive criticism in the comments down below for me on how to make this content better. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and may the forest be with you always. No.